Imagine you are looking at this reaction in your homework or maybe at best. What is going to be the product? Is it going to be this molecule? Now, would you be surprised if I told you that it's also going to be this product as well? And to make it more confusing, the major product here will depend on the way we do this reaction. Hey everyone, Victor is here, your guide to all things organic chemistry. And in this video I want to talk about the details of the hydrohalogenation of dienes, how to approach this reaction and how to determine the major versus minor products. So grab a cup of coffee, a notebook to work through the examples with me, hit that like button for good luck on the test and let's get started. So let's get back to this reaction which is the hydrohalogenation of butadiene. If I react this butadiene with my hydrogen bromide, which I have over here above the arrow, we are going to start this reaction with a simple electrophilic attack on the diene. Like we would normally expect for any alkene, the alkene, the pi bond of the alkene is going to reach out for that hydrogen and the electrons from HBr bond is going to end up on the bromine. So what that going to give me is the two possible carbocations. I am going to end up with one carbocation that going to look like this. This is obviously going to be a primary carbocation and this carbocation is the result of the hydrogen being attached to that carbon. And my other possibility here is going to be a carbocation that will look like that, which is going to be a result of my hydrogen attacking this carbon and that one is of course a secondary carbocation. Naturally, the primary carbocation is very unstable, so I'm pretty much going to discard that thing right away. The secondary carbocation that I have over here is a much more stable example, but in addition to being a secondary secondary carbocation, that carbocation is also allylic, which means that it is stabilized by resonance. So I can draw a resonance structure here looking like this, where I take my electrons of the pi bond, move them towards my carbocation, which going to give me another carbocation contributor looking like this. This is going to be a primary resonance contributor, but I do want to remind you that when it comes to our resonance contributors, it doesn't really matter whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary, because resonance contributors represent exactly the same species, and it means that our positive charge uh, is sort of distributed between two different locations in our molecule. I also want to point out that due to the resonance stabilization, you should always opt for the allylic carbocation. This is going to be true even if you are comparing the allylic carbocation with a tertiary carbocation that is not allylic. Allylic carbocation or resonance stabilized carbocation in general always going to beat anything else that you might have in your molecule. Now, since I have two possible places where the nucleophile can attack, we are going to end up with two different products. If my nucleophile, which is Br- in this case, attacks my uh, carbocation on the left, the resonance contributor on the left, then in this case we are going to end up with a product that looks like this. However, if my nucleophile, again my Br- minus my bromide, going to attack the other carbocationic position that I have in my molecule, then in that case my product is going to look like that. Simple enough so far, right? Now what's really interesting is that these two constitutional isomers that we get here as our products are not going to be formed in the same quantity. Quantities. But before we talk about the major and the minor product in this reaction, let's quickly discuss how we are going to refer to these two molecules. So the carbon where we attach our hydrogen, which is going to be this carbon over here in both cases, well that carbon we are going to number that as a carbon number one. And this numbering system has nothing to do with the IUPAC nomenclature whatsoever. This is just the way we are going to number our molecule for the purposes of this type of a reaction. So then, if we continue numbering through the rest of the molecule, then we are going to have 2, 3, 4, like that, which means that in the first case I'm going to end up molecule where the hydrogen was on the carbon number 1 and bromine on carbon number 2. This type of a product we are going to refer to as a 1, 2 product. In the other case, where the hydrogen was on the carbon number 1 and bromine was on the carbon number 4, well that one we are going to refer as 
a one for product. And as I said, it has nothing to do with the IOPAC nomenclature or numbering for the IOPAC purposes. This is just the way we traditionally refer to those products where the hydrogen attacking carbon number one and bromine ends up on the carbon number two or number four every single time. Now, returning back to our discussion of the major versus minor product, it is unfortunately a little bit more complicated than just, you know, pointing at one of them and saying that this one is going to be the major. The thing is, the major versus minor product in this reaction will depend on two factors. The structure of the molecule itself and we're also going to look at the conditions of our reaction itself. So let me elaborate on this. Let's go back to our mechanism over here. The 1-2 product, the one that I have on the left, this guy, that one forms very fast, and therefore we call this as a kinetic product. Why does it form so fast, you might ask? Well, the thing is, the HBr that we have over here, this molecule, it exists as a tight ionic pair, which means that the bromide anion is always going to be nearby our proton, and once the electrophilic attack makes the corresponding carbocation, this bromide anion is going to be right next to our carbocation so they immediately react with each other, giving us the 1-2 product. So remember, in a hydrohalogenation of dienes, the 1-2 product forms faster and it is called the kinetic product. This part is always going to be true. Well, what about the other product, the 1-4 product, this guy over here? The 1-4 product in this particular example is going to be called a thermodynamic product because it is more thermodynamically stable. And how do I know that? To assess the thermodynamic stability of products in this type of a reaction, we are going to look at the double bond. We know that the more substituents we have on the double bond, the more stable it is going to be. Well, in most cases. So, in the case of the 1,4 product in this reaction, the double bond is attached to two substituents. So, if I look closely, I can see that my double bond is connected to one two other groups, while the double bond in the case of the 1,2 product here is only attached to one other carbon, which means that the 1,4 product for this particular example again is going to have a more substituted double bond and therefore it's going to be more stable. Well, why does it even matter? We know that the 1,2 product forms faster, so who cares about 1,4 product, right? Well, not quite. You see, this reaction is an equilibrium, which is very important to keep in mind. And since we have resonance stabilized carbocation as our intermediate, the products can easily reform this intermediate, which means that even though 1-2 product forms faster than 1-4 product, it can just as easily break up and make other isomer in this reaction. So for each of the steps here in this reaction, I should technically write that this is an equilibrium equilibrium and we can go back to our resonance stabilized intermediate which can be then reattacked by the bromine from the other perspective. So let's analyze this situation from the kinetics and thermodynamics perspective. So we have our carbocation intermediate over here and for the simplicity's sake I'm going to abbreviate that as a C plus like that. Our carbocation intermediate can make either 1,2 product or 1,4 product. We know that 1,2 forms fast, so if I were to put everything onto the energy diagram, I'm going to have the following picture. So let's say I have my carbocation intermediate somewhere in the middle. Forming a 1,2 product doesn't take much energy, so my activation energy for that one is going to be relatively low, so I'm going to have a small hump. Forming a 1,2 4 product, however, is a much more energy consuming process, so the activation energy is going to be a little bit higher for that one, also meaning that that process is going to be slower. However, from the energy perspective, 1, 2 is not as stable as 1,4. My 1,4 product here, my thermodynamic product, is lower in energy, meaning that it's going to be more thermodynamically stable, but we already knew that part. But here is the interesting part. Since our 1-2 product can form rather easily, it can also break just as easy. When it comes to our 1-4 product, our thermodynamic product, it takes more energy and more time for that to form, but it takes significantly more energy for that to break as well. So, 
one two product will form fast and break fast, while our one four product forms slow and breaks slow. So in other words, if we make a thermodynamic product, it will be less likely to break up than the kinetic product, while the kinetic product forms fast and breaks fast as well. This means that with time, we are going to be accumulating the thermodynamic product and losing the kinetic product. So if we stop reaction quickly, or do it at low temperature, we are going to predominantly get the kinetic product. But if we give our reaction time to reach equilibrium, or do it at higher temperature, then we are going to predominantly get the thermodynamic product. So remember, whenever you are analyzing your reaction, low temperature means the kinetic product, high temperature means thermodynamic product. So does it mean that the 1,4 product will always be thermodynamic product? Well, absolutely not. This is one of the most common misconceptions in this reaction. The more stable product is the thermodynamic product, and whether it's going to be 1, 2 or 1, 4 depends on the molecule itself. So for instance, let's look at this reaction between 2,5-dimethylhexa-3,4-diene and our hydrogen bromide. The reaction starts, like in the previous case, with the electrophilic attack on our alkene from the HBr. Out of two possible carbocationic intermediates that I can get here, I'm going to write the allylic one right away and discard the other one, although the other one would be a tertiary carbocation here. But we know that the allylic carbocation is still more stable. Then the position where I have attached my hydrogen, I'm not showing the hydrogen, but that position is over here. So now I'm also going to show the resonance forms. We already have have one resonance contributor over here and the other resonance contributor will be if I take my double bond and move those pi electrons towards my carbocation, that going to give me a resonance contributor looking like this. Now next step is going to be my nucleophilic attack from my nucleophile which is in this case going to be Br-. So if I take my Br- and attack the first resonance contributor like so, I'm going to get the final product in this case looking like this. And since I have my bromine at the second position, we are going to call that as a 1, 2 product. And we know from our previous discussion that the 1, 2 product is always going to be kinetic product. So I'm going to say that this is a kinetic product right away. Now, in the second case, when I'm attacking my other resonance contributor, I'm going to take the bromine again, so I have my Br-, and now that Br- is going to be attacking this position. Well, in this case, I'm going to end up with a product that looks like that. And I have my bromine at the fourth position, so we are going to call it a 1,4 product in this particular case. So now, in order to determine which one is more thermodynamically stable, I'm going to look at the position of my double bond, and I'm going to see how many different things are attached to my double bond. The one on the left with the kinetic product is connected to 1, 2, three carbons, while the one on the right for my 1,4 product is connected to only one, two carbons. So in this case, my kinetic product is actually also a thermodynamic product on top of that. So remember, while 1,2 product is always going to be the kinetic product, the thermodynamic product can be either 1,2 or 1,4, so you have to analyze your molecule. So make sure you never blindly assign the kinetic and thermodynamic products by just looking at 1,2 or 1,4, but rather you need to carefully analyze your molecule and look at that so you don't miss where the double bond is and how many different substituents you have on your double bond. Now, while theory is of course is awesome, the only way to to master the skill is by practice. And to make sure that you don't miss the next video where I'm going to be doing practice questions with this type of reactions, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next time when I upload my video. Oh, and by the way, I do upload videos every single day, so make sure you subscribe, otherwise you're going to be missing all these updates. Also, if you found this video useful, hit the like button to help promote this video so more students can see that. Watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.